While indeed the Raspberry Pi has a very good and capable operating system called Raspberry Pi OS, which is based on Debian, I thought it would be really good if we could try and get FreeBSD 13 up and running on the Raspberry Pi 400 and get it to be as functional as Raspberry Pi OS. And in this video, I give it a try. So before we do anything, we'll need to download FreeBSD. So we'll go over to the FreeBSD webpage, go to the big yellow download FreeBSD option, click on it. We'll take you to the FreeBSD 13 release menu, kind of a menu thing. And there looks like there could be several candidates that we need to choose. Well, we don't need the AR64 or the RPIB. What we do need is the RPI for the Raspberry Pi 3 and 4. It's rather confusing, but that's the one we need. And it will take you to the release images. And if you just scroll down, and you will see, if I can find it, it's that one there. It says RPI. So we'll save it, and we'll let, it, uh, we'll let it download. Before we continue, I was going to say, normally you would actually install it to a USB stick or an SD card. If your Raspberry Pi can boot from a USB 3 device, then uh, that will be the best thing to choose. But in this case, the spare USB drive and SD card, unfortunately, uh, were corrupted. And they were the only two spare empty ones I had. So I decided to put it into a dock, connected USB, and load it into that. And while we're looking at uh, pictures of a Raspberry Pi setup, for sound, I used a little USB sound device. And uh, you can actually see it connected to a USB extender, so it gets pretty crowded at the back of the uh, Raspberry Pi 400. Uh, so that answers the question in case anyone asks, uh, how do you get sound working? I couldn't test it over HDMI. I plugged my headphones into it. Using your favorite method, write the image to a USB device, or in this case, the hard drive, the external hard drive. I'm using DD, but you could use any uh, on any operating system you wish. And we'll hit boot. Once that's done, we can actually boot into the newly written FreeBSD image. And it will uh, go through the boot sequence and it'll expand to fill the device, etc, etc. It's slightly different from a normal FreeBSD install in that it's almost, it's almost done for you. You just need to enter the default password and user, which is root and root. You can change them later and I would advise you do so. Right, we're in. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test the internet connection to make sure we've got a, a connection at all, which we have, which is uh, great. And that means that now... I can apply any FreeBSD updates. Because Raspberry Pi and the ARM architecture now is a tier one, we can actually receive some updates, which is uh, nice. Let's see if there is any. Ah, oh, so we're gonna download 50 patches, which is uh, okay. Right, I'm just gonna reboot to make sure everything installs correctly. And we'll just do a, a U name, and there we go, look. So it's, uh, so it's FreeBSD 13.0 release, patch set 4. Very nice. And there's the file system structure. Got 64 gigabytes spare. Just clear the screen. So now let's start installing some things. Otherwise, we're not going to have a desktop, are we? We're just going to have a, a, a rather nice uh, black and white command line. So we need to install uh, the graphics drivers, the uh, X11, and a few other things which I'll skip through because it does take a while. And here we are, the current progress. It's all going nicely. And here we are at the end. Very nice. All installed. So we'll just clear this again. Now I'm going to add a user, um, rather than just use the default root all the time. So I'm just going to add me. I'll skip through all that. And change the root password. It's always a good idea not to leave it at the default root. Right, we're all set up. We've got a new user and a new root password. Good. I'll log out. That means I can log in. And there we go. So now that we've done that, Gonna try X. Hopefully something works. There we go. It's TWM. Because we haven't actually set up the uh, X in it RC 
to actually point to a work uh, point to a desktop or a Windows environment, depends on which I feel like putting on. So we're just going to edit the file or create the file and edit the file. And the syntax really is just exec and the name of the desktop environment. And in this instance, we're using Mate. Now we're going to start it again, and it should boot into a nice clean new install of Mate. Yeah, there it is. The resolution is a bit out because we need to uh, alter some settings on the Raspberry Pi first before it looks right. But everything's nice and clean and installed as it should be. There's the other things that I installed as well as part of the KDE Plasma. Uh, yeah, that's very nice. It looks okay. And presently we're using just under 890. It's a, that's um, it's not true representation, but it's near enough. Right, let's log out. Right. And here are some alterations which I made to the system to make it more responsive as a desktop system. Uh, the top one being changed from the default 80, which is more of a server setting to uh, 224, which will give it more of a, a desktop feel. So you can have apply that using syscontrol or sysctl and then immediately that or put it in you forward slash etsy forward slash syscontrol.com file. In the Raspberry Pi boot partition, I commented out the HDMI underscore safe because what that will do, that will enable, in my setup, it might be different in yours, it depends, but in my setup, it enables the full resolution of the monitor to be used rather than uh, the large one, as we saw. It does mean that the terminal output is rather small, but we can alter that later if you want to. And the final one in the rc.com file is the PowerD underscore enable uh, equals yes. And what that does, it solves an issue where the Raspberry Pi 4 idles at 600 megahertz. Um, and so you can enable automatic scale into its default uh, 1500 megahertz. It's non-overclocked. Slightly higher in the Raspberry Pi 400. I think it's 1800 megahertz without putting that final one in you might find things a little bit sluggish so really with these three uh, alterations we should have a fairly responsive system and there we go very nice nice clean mate desktop and if we go straight into the uh, top to see what's uh, usage okay that's not, that's not too bad at all right so we're just going to install some other stuff some Caden live inkscape etc um, without them, we're really not going to get much done. And we'll proceed with the install. Now, this little section, uh, I'm going to fast forward through it, but it's really me just downloading and testing different packages to see what was available on the ARM uh, platform. Some worked, some didn't. Some were available, some weren't. So uh, we we'll just uh, breeze through all this. Right, we've finally done all that, and uh, we should have a, a basic uh, stable system. Right, this is the... HTOP for those who like to see HTOP. We've been using quite a bit um, for a while, so the memory usage and allocation has gone up a bit. But it's not too bad. Right, well, have a look. I've got Silphid, I've got uh, Firefox, and a whole host of other things have been installed. I'm not going to go through them. Uh, some games and graphics and internet and... Uh, Office suites, etc., programming, sound and vision, and system tools. Audacity is one of the things I installed. Now, because I installed the sound dongle on the USB stick, um, it picks it up. I haven't included, or I haven't got a microphone with a 3.5mm jack, so I can't test if it records, but I know that it will do. Right, so what we'll do next, we'll test uh, YouTube. We like to do that. The Raspberry Pi plays back YouTube videos very well. I haven't tested 4K, but I know that HD works uh, perfectly. Here we are. This is the channel promo. Runs okay. Some stuff for nerds. And yeah, it's fine. No drop frames. It's running at HD, of course. But, you know, that's fine. Oh, my old titles. Look at that. I might bring them back, actually. Hmm. Okay, that's fine. So that runs all right. I think it's fairly smooth and fluid. 
Um, yeah. As a desktop experience, just using your browser, um, the Raspberry Pi 400 running FreeBSD actually feels very good. It feels just as good as the uh, Raspberry Pi OS. And I'm doing a quick speed test. The Raspberry Pi doesn't pick up my full speed, uh, but it's not too bad. There is a little bit of limitation on the gigabit port, but that's ah, not so. We're not going to worry about that. All right, we've still got HTOP running, and we're going to look at. Uh, yeah. If you've got any children at home, it's always good to see if you can find some educational uses for your computers. And there are one or two interesting educational things built into KDE itself. You've got this one, which is uh, geography, or K-geography. And I'm going to test myself on a random... Uh, ooh, I don't know the United States at all, so I'm going to test myself on somewhere random. Um, yeah, okay, we'll try that one. Right. The St. Paul is the capital of, uh, I'll say, Massachusetts. I know it isn't, probably, but uh, who knows? Oh, uh, Well, no, obviously not. And I do apologize for those who live in the area. But I do not know my geography of the U.S. other than the capital cities. Right, so here we are running a video. I'm going to leave that running in the background. Nice uh, playlist of Men Without Hats. Some good songs of that. If you, ever, if you ever get a chance, try and listen to them, because... Uh, they did a lot more songs other than just safety dance. So I'm going to leave that playing in the background. And Key Turtle, another educational uh, application. Now this really does take me back to the 8-bit days. We used to use something similar on the BBC Micro. So I'm going to leave that on the top running. And try this one. Uh, black box, I have no idea what you do on this, but it looks cool. And we'll try... Oh, I know, yeah. Now we're going to try Patience. Nice bit of card game. It's very smooth, actually. Good animation. And Ma Young. Okay, we'll try that one. And this is another gorgeous-looking game. So there really are some good uh, built-in games from KDE. And what else can we do? Uh, oh, yeah, Inkscape, of course. One of the main uh, graphics applications I use all the time. Bit slow, but it's all right. Not too bad. And the thing about Inkscape is that it's really come a long way in the years since I started using it. It was it was sophisticated when they launched it, but now it's uh, really uh, for your vector graphics. There's nothing better. One thing I must say about this is that it feels very quick. I've got these other applications running, and the Raspberry Pi isn't struggling. So yeah, I applied a few uh, textures and colors, etc. Create a nice little piece of work of art. I'm just going to try some uh, fading on that. Um, ooh, very nice. But, um, yeah. Well, I'll see that on the National Gallery soon, no doubt. You saw it here first, by the way, if anyone does. Right, I'll just minimize that down. You can imagine I'm running these on a uh, double monitor. That'd be excellent. I'd love to do that. You can on the Raspberry Pi 400, we're going to, uh, on the Raspberry Pi 4 in general, because you've got two mini HDMI, but I'm only using it on one monitor now, but imagine on two monitors, that'd be excellent. So, GIMP. I'm going to try it new from a tempo, I think. Yeah. Not Nothing as sophisticated as what you saw on Inkscape, but I'll try and do something similar. There we go. Ah, this one's a little bit more laggy. That might be just GIMP in general, because it, it does tend to do that even on my uh, main system. And what else what can we do? Uh, mm. Oh yes, of course. A office application, LibreOffice. Things are starting to slow down a little bit, but then again, it's a very large uh, program. So just type hello. Make that a little bit bigger. There you go. Very nice. So yes. You got your graphics, some games, your uh, road processor. And we're using just over two gigabytes. 
So we've got plenty to spare. Still got the music playing in the background. I can't play none, obviously, for copyright reasons. And stats for nerds again. Okay, still no drop frames. I mean, to be fair, there's no animation as such, but it seems to be running smoothly. Very nice. Just leave that running again. Memory's bumped up a little bit, but that's to be expected. Um, Bluefish. Now, this has been going years. I love Bluefish. I used to uh, dabble with some HTML back in the day, but I don't do it anymore. But Bluefish, very reliable. Got Guinea for those who uh, want that. I'll close that one down. In fact, I'll close them all down so we get to a nice empty desktop. And there we go. Well, there are some minus points about running FreeBSD on a Raspberry Pi. One of them is related to uh, the graphics driver for the Raspberry Pi is uh, it's not finished yet or it's not available or it needs to be updated. One of them three, take your choice. And it relates us to OpenCV and it results in Caden Live giving this error message and a few other applications such as uh, FreeCAD, etc. won't run. Although, saying because it, if you look on the About Users LM, LLVM pipe, which uh, I've been told is not ideal, but as of the making of this video, a patch has been submitted which will be available in the next updates which will uh, fix that. So, Caden Live and all those that rely on a, a good graphics driver will probably work which is nice. And when it does, I'll show you the updated uh, video on that. And there you see, look, graphics is LLVM pipe, which is um, the cause of the problem. It runs perfectly fine for almost everything else, but there are one or two things which don't like that. So uh, we'll get that sorted. And uh, for me, big thing is that mind test doesn't work, which uh, is a shame. But apart from that, the only other problem I found is the lack of USB ports in the back, uh, requiring really to buy a um, a kind of like extender or USB uh, hub, which is no big deal, but it would be nice if there were a few more. But apart from that, FreeBSD on the Raspberry Pi 400 or the Raspberry Pi 4 itself is a very viable uh, alternative to the Raspberry Pi OS. It's fast. It's got almost all the software you could need. You know, you know, it, it's not a desktop system as uh, as to rival any of the uh, Intel machines, of course, at the moment. It's a very lightweight, very low powered, as in, you know, cost wise. And I think I would be more than happy to give this uh, with FreeBSD set up on it. More than happy to give it to someone who's not tech savvy. If all they want to do is some web applications, if they want to get the email through the web browser, they want to play some light games, read the, you know, the newspapers or listen to some music and all of them things, more than capable. It's more than capable. It, it's very cheap to run. I think it uses, um, I think last time I measured a Raspberry Pi 3 power usage, I think it's like, I don't know, only about 3 watts, if that. So grab yourself a Raspberry Pi, I've got a 4 or a 400, or even 3, you know, they're, they're still viable uh, alternatives. Get uh, FreeBSD 13, download it, put it on there, and give it a try. Thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a really good experience. And I'll be keeping this machine around with the external dock. And I'll be using it as a test machine in itself. And I wouldn't be surprised if you see a few videos with that uh, as the machine I'm demonstrating something on. Because I think it's uh, very, very nice. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you next time.